Hello friends, in this video I'm going to talk about channels in Go through an example. So in my example there are three functions. First is called input, second is called intermediate and third one is called output. So the idea is that we wire these three functions together in such a way that they can pass data in between them concurrently. So the input function will take user input and once it takes the user input then and only then the intermediate function will receive that input and it will do some intermediate steps on that user input and once it is done doing that only then the output function will receive the eventual data and it will just print it so we will be doing this through the uses of channels and go routines so go routines are basically lightweight threads in Go programs and they allow functions or several functions to run concurrently. And concurrency is different than parallelism in the sense that when two programs are parallel that means they are actually running exactly at the same time most of the times. Which means uh, imagine two runners running in a 100 meter race. So that's where they are basically doing the work parallelly. Whereas if you imagine relay race, for instance, in that case, uh, one person runs with a baton, then he hands over the baton to the other person and only then the next person starts. So this is an example of concurrency. Of course, while passing of the baton, there may be both of them running at the same time. This is one example of concurrency. Coming back to the example here, I have this main function, which generates two channels and you generate a channel using this make keyword so in this case my channel is of type string which means you can pass strings through this channel so my input chan i call it is basically make chan string and similarly i create an output channel and then i basically call these three functions in a go routine and this is how you create a go routine by simply using the keyword go and I have a for loop an infinite for loop here in the main so that the program never finishes so that I can let this program run as long as we want just for this example so what happens in this input input function basically has this string variable here and in an infinite for loop waits for a user input and when it gets an input that input gets passed through this input chan and then there's this intermediate function and here this also has a infinite for loop and it basically waits something to come up inside this input chan okay so when we initially run these functions using go routine this intermediate function here it blocks at the first iteration of this for loop because this is the way channels are designed so as long as there is nothing passed into input chan, nothing will come out of it, okay? So basically this code will wait for a user to give something uh, as an input. Only then this will be passed through this input chan and assigned to this variable. Then it will do some intermediate steps. In this case, I'm simply just doing uh, adding a string to this string and then this will be passed to this output channel and the, what the output function does is basically listens for what is put inside this output channel okay so this will also block until something is passed to this output channel and once something is passed then and only then this will be executed and then it will simply print Okay, so let me run the program to show you how it works. Okay, so now we are here where the program is waiting for an input from the user. So if I give any string, let's say, then you can see finally I'm printing it here. This line gets executed. And because this string got added, to whatever input I gave which means this intermediate step was also executed 
okay and because of this infinite for loop here it is still waiting for more inputs from the user okay so if i give another yeah this is a very simple example of how channels work and how data can be passed around in between different goroutines to give a visual overview here i have created a simple diagram where you can imagine these long arrows to be the goroutines corresponding to these three functions you can imagine channels to be wirings between them so an example case of wiring is this where i am pushing my user input to this input channel and this input channel is giving whatever is inside this out to this variable okay so this is one part of the wiring one end of the wiring and this is the other end of the wiring so these k2 can be visualized uh, here in this case in input function we are pushing it to this channel and the channel will push out in this intermediate function so this pushing out of from the channel will not occur until there is something that has been pushed into this channel okay so this is how concurrency works in go this will be blocked here until something is actually pushed here and same as in this case so in the output go routine this will also block here until something actually gets pushed into this channel in this intermediate go routine okay so this is a brief overview of how channels work and there are a couple of other concepts related to channel for example buffered channels so basically this is an example of unbuffered channel which means only one data can be passed through a channel and as long as it is not passed it will be blocked in case of buffered channel you you can basically increase that number to uh, a bigger number if you want uh, but that's outside of the scope of this current video and also there is another concept called uh, sync and wet group and that i will also cover in future so to summarize channels are basically uh, sort of message queues or pipes in between different go routines through which go routines transfer data and an unbuffered channel blocks until something is actually pushed to the channel if you have any questions feel free to comment and if you like this video then please give it a like and subscribe thank you